Good day, brothers and sisters, and what a glorious day to be here on the show again, and as usual, per your wish and gratitude, you share your love with us by clicking this, you know, subscribe and like buttons and all that great stuff that you do always, and I don't need to remind you anymore because I know where you live. I will remind you about that. Glenn, what's up? How you doing? Uh, like I say, every day is a good day. Looks like we're going to be starting off the segment with our favorite part. It's the comedy time, so click and subscribe because this is going to make you laugh. And it's just in time with Justin Trudeau. Yeah, there's really no comedy without Justin Trudeau. Uh, well, actually, I don't know. The comedy writes itself when we have Justin Trudeau on the show. And he's a special guest for the last few shows. It's not by design. It's not like we hear attacking him intentionally, like, Justin, let's, you know, let's get him. Let's, no, it's just what it is. He presents an opportunity himself to make fun of him. Well, actually, he makes fun of himself, and we just show you how he does it. Constantly talks out of two corners of his mouth, and this is not new. Remember last week we covered the BBC and the NPR complaining how they've been exposed as the... Um, uh, the government spoken agency, basically, you know, this is the propaganda channels. And the reasons why they are is because they're getting paid, they're getting uh, resources from the government directly. Now, the CBC complained and they said, well, we're no longer going to use Twitter because it's so unfair. Uh, and even Elon Musk made fun of them by saying, uh, well, they said, oh, it's less than 70% of funding. So he put 69, <laughs> right? Don't you love Elon Musk? Uh, we we have a story about him later as well, but let's jump right into our favorite guy, Justin. Actually, by the way, uh, how do you feel about Justin nowadays? Well, uh, looks like the writing's on the wall. With, with Justin Trudeau, he gives us the comedy. We don't go after him. It's It's like before and after all the time, you know, or cause and effect. You watch it, you look at, Things he said just a little bit earlier, and it's completely different. You, 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 you compare them, and you can't help but laughing. Well, here he's trying to be a little bit funny, but then just watch. You sometimes hear about liberal bias in the media these days, how they're constantly letting off our government, letting our government off the hook for no good reason. Frankly, I think that's insulting. It's clear that they let us off the hook for a very good reason, because we paid them $600 million. You don't get stellar headlines like these without greasing the wheels a bit. He's laughing at your face. Was, was that AI or is that the real No, hand? that's the real thing. That's from three years ago. That's pre-pandemic Oh, that's times. the before. That's the pre-pandemic stuff. Oh, I see. Okay. Because that... I mean, <laughs> he's really throwing it out there, right? Well, now he's it's not so even obvious. hiding, but it's like it's like before he's like, you remember the segment we covered last time? He's like, oh, I can't count, you know, 13 plus 14, uh, uh, 27. It's so hard under pressure. That's his words. I mean, you can watch the previous episode. We're not doing anything here. We're not really embellishing any truth here. It is self-evident because the Internet is a wonderful thing. You can't hold us accountable to the things that we say by looking at all the previous episodes. And please go do that and also click subscribe and like buttons there and leave your comments. You know what to do. But then you go back into this, uh, what happened yesterday, and Trudeau is really, really upset about, you know, the uh, the conservative party gaslighting the fact that, you know, how dare they talk back about CBC because CBC is so good and it's nowhere near as bad as I presented in 2019. <laughs> Right? Let's let's do this. Uh, okay. I think it says a lot about the Conservative Party of Canada. That they're choosing to constantly attack independent media organizations, journalists who are working hard to keep Canadians informed and support our democracy. CBC Radio Canada. Uh, serves right across the country, delivers 
local news and local content in many regions of the country. Fake news. That yes, has been challenged over the past years. But the idea of uh, yes has been challenged. About, what, what's the other? What's the other word for that? I, I, it has been challenged. Is like well, they don't really know how to steal money properly from the taxpayer. So we constantly got to give them more because they give themselves unjustifiable raises and uh, you know invest into the whatever sectors there. They pickpocket the money, and that's what that means. One point two four billion Canadian taxpayers' dollars in 2021-2022. Just imagine what Zelensky could have done with that kind of funding. Mm. <laughs> we have that story as well. But let's, let's finish. Adding it. to that challenges and laying on by attacking this Canadian institution, attacking the culture and local content that is so important to so many Canadians. What's with the eyes? Uh, really indicates. Is it the same guy? Okay, uh, hold on. Uh, let me just go back to that. You this, brought up an interesting point. This Let, looks like AI. It looks like a deer caught in a headlight. Yeah, well, hey, you got a, got a great point here. Let's, let's bring this up again. You sometimes hear about liberal bias in the media these days, how they're constantly letting off our government, letting our he government off the He does look like a different guy, doesn't no he? good reason, frankly. I think that's insulting. It's clear that they Bad let politics us off the will do that to you. It'll make reason. you age a lot quicker. Remember Obama after a few years in office? I think they showed this with everyone, right? Like this. So, uh, look, this guy's talking about the out values of and the approach that Mr. Polyev is putting forward. And I think it is telling that in order to attack this institution that is important for many, many Canadians. He runs to American billionaires. That's that's an Elon Musk reference, by the and way. In committee, and in their uh, in their approach on. Our so basically, uh, Justin just uh, accused Polyev and uh, doing the cahoots thing with the uh, Elon Musk. He's like, oh, Elon, how? And look, Ellen doesn't have a skin in the game. I don't even want to see the rest of the show. There's the rest of the story uh, because uh, there's a more important story there. Uh, but, um, you know, Ellen specifically was, did you see the um, Tucker interview? It was a two-parter, and he talked about everything from, like, aliens to AI to uh, Twitter files and everything else. It's pretty interesting. Just if you didn't see it, let me let me just show you right here. Right here. The degree to which uh, various government agencies had effectively had full access to everything that was going on on Twitter uh, blew my mind. Um, I was not aware of that. Would that include people's DMs? Uh, yes. And, and that's the point. And that's the point. Like, you cannot trust any sort of social media or any kind of media, legacy media, private me media anymore. If it has any kind of reach, you know, like the original uh, conspiracy story that uh, uh, Facebook was always designed as some kind of, you know, CIA tool to collect data on people. Yeah, it, it's quite obvious that just th that's a, a, an arm of the government propaganda machine. That's all. It's bought and paid for. It's run by the elites who also put the governments in power under the precipice that, oh, we have a democracy. They choose who we can vote for, and then we vote for the choice that they want. That's democracy in North America. And again, if you use your power of discernment and you... and Okay, brothers and sisters, it's not like power of discernment. Okay, listen to Alex and Glenn's show, and then you'll know how to figure out. No... To use your power of discernment, you have to level up yourself. How do you level up yourself? You know, it starts with self-discipline. It starts with self-exercise, self-respect, you know, food intake, uh, you know, better dietary habits. You know, change your reality, you know, how you talk to yourself, how you talk to other people. It, and where do you, and it's, it is important where you get your sources from. So, like, if you're like, okay, I used to get my uh, news from CNN and NBC and MSN and CBC and all that stuff. And we're telling you here, well, most likely those people are not going to shoot themselves in the foot by telling you something other than the government wants them to tell you. Because this is where they get their funding from. And so, sometimes funding is not as direct as you think. Like uh, Bell Media, for example. Maybe they don't get as much funding in CBC, but Bell Media plays a COVID commercial every 30 seconds on the radio stations. You think those are cheap? <laughs> That's expensive as well. So they're not going to go against the narrative of the government. But if you do your own homework, 
And it's not necessarily like, oh, okay, listen to all those different alternative sources and everything else, but also have some moral value, you know, step up with your history, step up. And I don't mean like history that you teach in the books, but, you know, read some alternative stuff, read some philosophy books. And as you receive this information for yourself from other sources, you're going to be better able to equip to have your own uh, garbage meter, <laughs> so to speak. You will know just by reading the headline what they're trying to do with this. You don't even need to know the source. Uh, so, well, let, let us present you with a different source here. Here in Canada, we have some people who are actually probably a little bit more sane than uh, Justin Trudeau and his team. There are some simple facts that should not be controversial. Water is wet, Saskatchewan is cold in the winter, and the CBC is funded by the government. None of that should freak anybody out. But in Liberal Ottawa, pearls are being clutched and outrage manufactured, all because for greater transparency, Twitter applied the government-funded media tag to the CBC's account. Liberal MPs are calling it nonsense, an unwarranted attack, even a threat to democracy. What don't they understand? The CBC was created by government, it gets over a billion dollars a year from government, and the government appoints the board that controls it. But it's no wonder why Liberals are reacting this way. They love the CBC because they get so much benefit from it. The CBC sued the Conservative Party in the middle of an election. Its CEO openly attacked the Conservative leader, and it eagerly carries Liberal messages all the time. Right. But good news for all those who are upset and having fits about Twitter's decision. The government-funded label won't be around for long. After the next election, the Conservative leader will make sure it doesn't get any tax dollars at all. Yeah. Canadians should be happy with that for a change. Right, actually not taking more of our tax dollars and throwing it just to push their agenda? That would be something. That's a, a, a win. Do you trust Andrew Scheer in this? I mean, like, that was a good statement, but he's trying to score some, you know... Pre-election points. How, how, how do you feel about Andrew Shear? I know, I know it's, it's Canadian not that politics. I, it's not that I trust Andrew Shear that much. It's I just distrust Trudeau and the Liberals that much. And after this, the party that's joined with the Liberals to keep the government functioning, that's the NDP, Jagmeet Singh, he's also supporting Trudeau against what the billionaire Elon Musk put on Twitter, which was only the truth, by the way. He's just showing it to the people. But nobody denied it. That's that's the whole point, including Justin himself. He just said, we played you a video from 2019. He's like, well, you know, people complain, but like, why would you complain? Because, you know, they get the all the funding from us. He just said it to your face. And then four years later, oh, how dare they actually mention it? Only I can say those things. It was similar. I don't have this video now, but a uh, few days ago, uh, sh somebody showed me a video of, during the pandemic. Uh, uh, Jacinta uh, Arden. Remember our friend Jacinta Arden? From New Zealand? Yes. Yes. You know, she talks like this. You know, she's she's got the New Zealand accent, and now she's somewhere in... Where, 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 she got a new position somewhere in WF, right? Yeah. Like the truth. Oh, she's the she's the, she's the minister in the Ministry of Truth or something like this, which is ridiculous. And what she said then, uh, she said, I wish I can pull this video up. I, I'm not going to. But you can look it up yourself. She said, uh, you shouldn't trust any sources unless it's a government sources. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> she, she's quite literally said that. She's like, unless the information covering from places like CBC, don't trust it. But you should only trust CBC because we... We we only have your best interest in mind, you know. It sounds like a lot of history repeats itself in the world, and the people are so gullible. And that's another reason I believe the education is just like dropped down so much in the last few years because we, people not ta taught history, people not taught li historical literature or anything like this, so they cannot think for themselves. Just follow zombies, you know. And there's so many zombie videos out there now. And again, you can look it up for yourself. Glenn, how how you feel about Jacinta Ardern? That and, and well, uh, her and the others, with people's awareness muscles getting bigger and stronger because they're working it more, uh, they're um, waking up to the fact that government that they so-called elected was not for them, and so in many countries in the world they are protesting, protesting with their wallets, protesting with their voter rights and actually protesting 
physically to overturn the government, to get rid of it. That's, that's the people taking back the power. The government works for the people, not the other way around. The government is not supposed to tell the people what to do. The people are supposed to tell the government what to do because the government comes from the constituency, comes from the people. It's by the people, for the people. That's the way it was before. That's the way it is not now, but that is the way it will become in the future. Yeah, look at what's happening in France. You know, people protesting left and right in France and uh, not just... It's been going on for many, many, many days, <laughs> weeks, right, since the reform. And actually, as far as I'm concerned, it's been going on for years. Remember the Yellow Jackets, Glenn, and, uh, and now everything to do with the pension funds and all, all, all this stuff? It's crazy. Here, I got a zombie video for you. Zombies, we just talked about it. Here, here's Philadelphia. That's Philly. Apparently, a friend of mine just came back from Vancouver, and he says, you would think you were in a bad movie. Same thing. Well, this is drugs. This is clearly drugs. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we're actually going to cover on that story in a, little, in a little bit towards the end. That's our brothers and sisters. There's our brothers and sisters that are struggling. In need, man. They're struggling. And we have no money. We have no, nothing, resources to help them. What do you mean? We have 100 billion we just sold to send to Ukraine. Yeah. Yeah. To fight an imaginary war, a proxy war. Well, it's not even imaginary anymore. Like the, the, the those document links prove that there are American forces on the ground. Uh, true story, but I, and I've mentioned it before. I believe here uh, on our program uh, that uh, when I traveled to Russia before uh, all that stuff happened in 2021, I took a plane through Europe. I forgot which country, maybe Germany, etc. And there was a. Um, uh, it was clearly a, a, a soldier on the plane with me and asked him, you know, uh, what branch of the, what, what branch of you, of the army are you? And he told me something I don't remember, but he was flying to the Baltic states and there was at least six, five to six months before any of that stuff erupted. And the, um, interesting part that, um, you know, we are presented with the information that it is like, oh, it just happened. You know, like uh, the Russia attacked Ukraine out of nowhere. And, you know, there was no precedent in the, the last eight years or last 30 years of build up around, you know, the NATO countries and uh, Ukraine itself means nothing. Absolutely. Uh, the Putin is the dictator and you should not... Uh, you know, you should not take him for granted and blah, 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 and all this other stuff. And now we know that there's American forces and then your brothers and sisters and Canadians too, by the way, uh, on the ground dying for the bank awards. Glenn, isn't that true? We always mention that here. Yeah, we've always said that everything is engineered, but the engineering process, the planning process takes time before the, the actual act is carried out. Just like you're going to see um, many countries and central banks start talking about central bank digital currencies. The IMF is what we talk about uh, often, the international monetary fraud, I mean fund, uh, fraud sounds better. They're coming out with a UMU, a universal monetary unit, which will be a, a central bank digital currency. So... The real purpose of these digital currencies is to, to inflict even more control on the people. It's less about a medium of exchange and more about them having absolute control. If they don't like what you're doing or what you stand for or you're trying to wake up the masses through awareness levels, they could turn off your your own personal monetary transaction system through that central bank digital currency. And now you're going to have to be uh, left up to your, your, you know, like family and friends to take care of you for a little while. And I believe, I believe the number is something like 114 countries are, are now being under consideration or in currently developing those, what are they, CBDC? Central bank digital currencies, yeah, so all the, being engineered purposely because we know, we've been telling people on the show that the current 
monetary system, which is a debt-based monetary system, been in play, been engineered since 1971. It's on its last legs because the debt is 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 getting too heavy, and the whole thing is tipping over now. Okay, let's get let's get to the to the other stories. Oh, how convenient! Speaking of money, uh, let's. Uh, the big question with the dollar under fire from rival countries and currencies. Like, so you, we're talking about CBDC. Is it another strategy to somehow to remain control over the financial institutions of the West because dollar is collapsing? Is that because the petrodollar, the, or they call it a greenback, is no longer a dominant currency or losing its dominance? I mean, you can see it here in the article, Market Watch. Big question with the dollar under fire from rival countries and currencies. What happens to markets? If the green big back loses its dominance, I don't know what happens, Glenn. What happens is it's going to be more difficult in the West where this uh, currency comes from, the U.S. dollar, the petrodollar, or the world reserve currency. It has been losing its status slowly as the world reserve currency, and that is speeding up at the rate at which it's losing its status as the world reserve currency. So that's going to be very inflationary on countries in the, in the West that still trade with the U.S. dollar. And a lot of the other countries see the writing on the wall and they're saying, we don't want any part of it. So they're starting with their own form of trade outside of the SWIFT system. That's an engineered Western bank system. Well, the Anglo-American Empire system, where many nations were, were a part of. But now it's over half the world's population now is switching to the new allegiance. So that's going to be very, very difficult for people who are used to this way that we've had it for so long. Because it was very, very beneficial to the people in the West. That's why they were allowed, they allowed globalization. You offshored all the jobs to other countries to keep your labor costs down. And we paid them with just printed confetti dollars. Now they don't want these dollars anymore because they're losing value too rapidly. Well, there's a place to use those dollars. How do they, how do, in my opinion, like this is the last attempt why, why we're seeing so much uh, uh, liquidity shift, I guess. Like we're... If, yeah. The uh, quantitative easing is basically the printing money that has a little bit of value still left and they're sending it to countries like Ukraine. And this is, while it still has a value, this is, let's launder it somehow. Ukraine seems the proper foundation for that. Um, I think, you know, insider trading, <laughs> if you are friends with anybody in the government, uh, either or, either Ukrainian or Canadian or American government, uh, look where the money is being funneled to. And I don't mean like, okay, Zelensky got it. Well, he got 400 million. Like there's an article here uh, that says, uh, Ukraine war, Zelensky embezzled 400 million al allocated by the US for purchasing fuel. And that was investigated by Seymour Hirsch. That's the same guy who did the Nord Stream investigation into saying how well, allegedly, <laughs> which is probably, if it uh, walks like a bird, <laughs> talks like a bird, it probably is a bird, right? It's He did say that uh, Nord Stream was bombed by the Americans themselves based on his investigation. Now he investigated into another scandal that Zelensky and his buddies, and that's just from the oil money allocated. Imagine there's 100 billion of dollars, you know, what we don't actually know the numbers of embezzled, no, embezzlement, really. Like, it's impossible to pinpoint at this point. There's no checks and balances of any kind. You know something, big guy? There could never be. Because, cold hard fact, nobody even knows how much American dollars have been printed into existence. Okay? It could be three times as much as their stated amount. Nobody knows how much of this fiat currency is printed and it's funneled to try while it still has value they turn that into real tangible assets the more money you print for some reason it floats to the top to the rich if you noticed in the last 10 years 
It's the wealthiest people in the world who've increased their net worth exponentially while the middle class is struggling and the poor have always struggled. So it's the middle class that makes the economy. And we're still working. Money can never be destroyed. It only gets transferred. And it always transferred, transfers upwards to the elites. And they use the war machine as a vehicle to do it, right? Um, always have. Yeah, that's 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 uh, first world war, second world war. That's when you had huge money printing going on. Okay, that's to finance the war, but so they know that. So they say, okay, we'll finance the war. We'll uh, uh, embellish it even more. Say it costs exponentially more. We'll tell that to the people, to the populace, through the mainstream media muppets. People believe everything that they hear, everything that they see. They do not want to discern because that takes actual willpower and work and effort. No, no, just make it easy for me. Just tell me what to think and how high to jump. But also it uh, destroys your reality, right? It's, it's hard to face it. Like if somebody tells you, no, your reality is different, man. You, have, you live in, in imagination. And now somebody destroyed it. It's scary to step, you know, that's, what, that's red pilling, right? Yeah, what you have to do is explain to them that it's their perception of reality perceived reality okay it's all that they know but you have to start very very slowly or else they will push against you we saw that for uh, the last couple of years during the uh, the pandemic the pandemic the scamdemic you know well the, there's there's no end to the theft that's happening right now well would you would you consider taking russian assets in like if you uh, country with a thinking leadership would you take would you listen to the ukrainian government uh and like okay let's take uh, russian assets from ukraine and reappropriate it for whatever other needs that's that, that seems like a bit much in it that's like a form of extortion you have a big russian huge plane that's stuck in uh, toronto pearson airport because of the uh, conditions that our government uh, against the uh, against the russians because of ukraine and now they say that they're going to give the plane to the ukrainians let's listen to confiscate the aircraft aircraft and other russian assets in canada and transfer them to ukraine he unveiled the ukrainian plan on a facebook post outlining topics he discussed with prime minister justin trudeau what bothers me that's not canadian plan that's a ukrainian plan that's the Ukrainians coming and telling a government what to do with assets of another country. I wonder how Canadians would like if there was an Air Canada plane down in a friendly country of Russia, and then they just allowed the Russians come in and confiscate the plane, saying, ah, oh, tit for tat. You kill my dog, I kill your cat. You take our plane, we take your plane. Good thing that Mr. Putin is actually showing a lot more patience than we give him credit for because well, they're really trying him. Well, he also a chess player, right? Like it seems like the West is playing checkers with a chess player, which is absurd in itself. Again, I don't really want to get into like Putin versus the West. I, I still believe it's all part of the same. The reason why I believe it's part of the same is because when, uh, you know, the whole plan gimmick happened throughout the world, uh, remember that the first thing, all the, pretty much all the countries went on lockdown. Uh, all the countries pretty much implemented some sort of kind of uh, impossible uh, laws that prevented people from even going outside and enjoying their daily activities. And like, because they was threatened. And uh, I'll give you an example. Iran does not fit into any, <laughs> before Russia itself, Iran was the most sanctioned country in the world, right? Maybe after North Korea or whatever. But in terms of like uh, being a friendly to the West country, it wasn't. And look what happened there with the plan gimmick. The same thing, the same lockdowns, the same enforcements, the same, you know, same shots, same everything, yeah. same restrictions. But they all play into this. How do we know? By the way, same thing happened in Russia. 
How do we know? And by actually, when the military activity started in Russia, within weeks, all the playing gimmick stuff was over in Russia. How do we know it's all not part of the same? That's what we're we're going to surmise right here. It is part of the same. It was done worldwide to slow down the economies, cause all the nations in the world to print more money, give it to the people. And they they went out and created demand for products and services with all this printed money. So it drove up the prices of everything. You had demand for the products and service exceeding the supply, and you had too much money chasing the same amount of supply. So you had a double whammy. So then you had a blow up of prices. And then they what they did was all the countries in the world, they raised the interest rates to try and put a cap on this. Now you're going to see all the corporations uh, closing, banks this is not over with the banks, by the way. We're just having a little lull. There's going to be a lot more banks, and a bank coming to you, near you, is going to be uh, facing bankruptcy unless they need a bailout or a bail-in or a percentage of both. Uh, remember how uh, flu disappeared <laughs> during playing gimmick? It disappeared everywhere in the world, by the way. There was no flu. Uh, and now they have those COVID, and that's, this is not new. This is like a probably a year old or close to it. The COVID-19 influenza A and B antigen test, uh, antigen test. And uh, in 2021, there was zero uh, flu cases, but 32 million COVID cases. And in 2020, it was 38 million flu cases and zero COVID cases. Uh, now flu is making a comeback <laughs> because it's popular again, because the flu shots. By the way, like I think... Um, one of my original conspiracies was that the people that received the flu shot uh, the fall before the COVID outbreak uh, and they got uh, deathly ill, I think if if there was any kind of MK Ultra stuff going on, then, uh, um, you know, the immune systems were jeopardized or maybe even infected via flu shot. Because remember, like, uh, where did people got sick the most? In uh, nursing homes, you know, elderly. And elderly are the ones that most likely to receive the flu shot. Yeah, they're older. Their immune system is already compromised. They're not getting much. They're very lethargic, not getting much exercise, not getting proper nutrition. Of course, that would be a target because uh, for the government, that's nothing but an expense. You see, we're all just numbers. Okay, we're, we're, that's all we are is a number. Never mind, we're, we're a dollar sign. Never mind your social insurance number. That's just a tracking system on you. But we all just are dollar signs to the government. And um, that, that's the whole pension thing going on in uh, uh, France, right? That's why they have to raise the age because just mathematically it's not working out. There's no birth rate. There's more older people and younger people are just not there to pay the taxes. So... With hope they're bringing the <laughs> immigration, hoping immigration would pay the taxes. But what, why would immigration pay the taxes if they're all sitting on social support, thus spending more taxes? So it's not really helping the system. It's amazing how immigration, they choose to immigrate to the places that are, are the most socialist, you know, the most handouts. They used to come here for our freedoms, but then a lot of people look at all the opportunities we give on the taxpayers' back and they come here for our free things. Uh, that's not going to be very productive for society. Um, yeah, we, we need the immigration also because um, we're not having as many children as we used to. Families are not, well, they're not, they're, there are no families, very few of them anymore. They've been broken up. Uh, some people, they, they, they still want to get married and let's try it. And they throw the dice and that. It's not the way it the way it used to be. I don't know. It's, uh, people say you're a dinosaur. Uh, that I know that the way it used to be was a better way. You look the way things are going on today, and you see all the people on antidepressants, all the people who are very unhappy with their life, and you realize that the new way is not a very good way. We have to go back to something with a higher moral value and uh, for higher uh, esteem in society and proper family values. Well, let's move on. 
with our stories. It's not really a story that it's nothing new. Like uh, we do know that uh, the Blair, you know, remember Tony Blair, the the Prime Minister of England. He was one of the buddies during the Iraq War. We knew. Weapons of mass destruction. Yeah. Remember that? Let's go in. We have to get them before they get us. Preemptive striking. Yeah, all made up, all fake, phony and false. Yeah, and now they all admit it like, oh, Britain's uh, former PM struck Iraq in 1998 to please, blink, to please Bill Clinton. What do you mean? Like, Monica, please? <laughs> what is it? Are they all, is it, was it on Epstein Island where they made a deal? <laughs> I don't know, Glenn. What's up with that? You know something, champ? <laughs> the, 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 he should be executed. You know how many people, how many families, how many people were killed because of this false premise just to convince the public that we have to go in there because the leader of that country is a, such a bad person and we have to liberate the people over there from this bad person. Okay, so we're going to come in there. And it was all lies. And yet they go on with their, their lives. And the people over there, uh, they got bombed every day, every night. You know, everything was, it's been turned upside down. And is anything that better today when you look at it besides a few people making a lot more money and most people just barely getting by? Ridiculous. Well, the truth is, the truth is, uh, we are so focused right now on the Ukrainian war because all the points of attention, even your alternative sources of media point to, and if you watch TV, it's like, okay, uh, without sounding um, racist, if you watch TV, uh, well, actually it's not, uh, let's say in the 90s, like that's how I learned English from shows like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and Family Matters and uh I don't remember all the uh, uh, black shows on TV or African American or Canadian American shows. I don't know what's the proper way of calling it without being canceled. Um, it, it was sort of like misrepresentative in a sense. You know, you had Cosby Show and this uh, Jamie Fox. Um, uh, is it all in the family? I don't remember. I don't remember all the shows, but. Even when I spoke English, I spoke English with like an African American accent because that's how I learned it from the TV. And the idea is, um, if you watch, watch TV in the '90s, you would think the population of the United States was roughly 50/50, like half white, half black, right? More or less. And obviously, there's other nations. Now, if you watch TV, it's like, well, at least uh, 25 to 30 pop percent of population of America is transgender or gay. Right, uh, and uh, so if you watch the TV now, <laughs> the biggest thing that's happening right now in the world in terms of war and atrocities is Ukraine. But yet we have this uh, um, article that we want to discuss <laughs> that actually brings your attention to other things. The outlet identified the war in Ethiopia, which saw more than a half a million lose their lives is the deadliest. And it's not Ukraine. Um, the bloodiest conflict in the world last year was not in Ukraine, but in Ethiopia. The Economist claim on Monday, citing Comfort Euro, the head of the think tank crisis group, no estimate for Ukraine is as high as the 600,000 non-combatants, so the, just the civilians, that reportedly lost their lives in Tigray war between 2020 and 2022. The outlet concluded. Figures from the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner to Human Rights suggested approximately 22,000 civilians casualties in Ukraine, which breaks down to just over 8,000 deaths and 14,000 injured in the conflict as of March 2023. Another ethnic genocide going on. A big one. But hey, no, no, let's focus somewhere else. Shh, let's, they're not finished yet. So let's not put any cameras over there. Plus, it's that, that African country. So the world should be used to it by now after Rwanda and all the other problems that they've had. This is ridiculous. That is a much bigger thing there going on. And we would have the power to stop that much easier than Ukraine. But no, no, let's focus on Ukraine. 
Let's let them do their own ethnic cleansing, and uh, pfft, that's none of our business. But Ukraine is Canadians' business? Really? Russia is Canadians' business? I sit here today saying Canadians' business is Canada. Our taxpayers should be going towards Canadians, helping Canadians out. Not around the world helping other elites out and helping uh, cause problems and destruction around the world. This we should all be ashamed of. Well, speaking of Ukraine, if we, if, if we stay on a, I don't want to really stay on this uh, war subject much longer, but let's just uh, kill it. <laughs> Pentagon leaks revealed date of Ukrainian counteroffensive. You know, that's the news week. Yeah, another trust, trustworthy source. Uh, Kiev is reportedly expected to launch a push against Russia forces at the end of this month. Again, to me, this is a you know, distraction story. The real story there in those leaks that uh, there was a U.S. Army, not just intelligence, but you actually have foot soldiers, uh, U.S. and other NATO nations uh, directly engaging Russian army on the land in Ukraine. So it, it, it is a World War III. It's... Uh, Never tell the opposition <laughs> what you intend to do. You know, like, like everybody knows that. Is this if, the, if this is a leak? I, I don't know. It's 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 too engineered. It's not real. Well, it's just like, um, do you believe in the the story uh, with the? Well, th not that we don't believe. We covered it here in Canada that uh, Toronto and Vancouver and Montreal, and Montreal yep. have. Uh, Chinese police stations. Now they find out that they have them in New York. New York. Well, they had them. They actually, no, I think they had them all along and people were talking a lot about this, but now there's actual arrests have been made and I don't know if there's any charges, but two men set up an illegal police station in New York's Chinatown and FBI and DOG claimed. How how does it even work? Like, how do you just set up a police station in a different jurisdiction? Well, they 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 turn their eyes the other way, uh, the, you know, here in the West. But it's it, it, if you notice that all these so-called police stations, they pop up in very left-leaning places within the country, left-leaning cities, you know, left-leaning states. You had BC, you had Montreal here, Quebec, and now you're having it in uh, in New York. Uh, Probably going to see it in California coming up soon too. They probably already have it. They just didn't. They didn't make any arrests. Or oh, the idea is like what you say: why liberals? Well, because we have people like Justin Trudeau claiming I admire Chinese uh, autocracy. Or what did he say? Not autocracy. Uh, Form of system of governance. They're they're able to change. No, on he a actually time. used the word it's dictatorship. dictatorship. Yeah. He used the word dictatorship because you can make uh, you can basically make people do things <laughs> without. <laughs> You know, and that's the democratic value that, you know, our way Western democracy that we're protecting in Ukraine. That's his words, too. So he constantly speaks out of two corners of, your mouth, of his mouth. But, you know, he's just so charming, and that's why we keep voting for him. And I don't, I don't believe so. I don't, I don't. Glenn, I'm sure you didn't vote for Justin. <laughs> really? You even have to ask me that? You want to put me on the spot, on the hot spot? Uh, <laughs> what did the viewers think? <laughs> <laughs> the Department of Justice uh, on Monday arrested two New Yorkers charging them with helping the government of China establishing a secret police station in Manhattan and with trying to hide evidence of that from the FBI. The U.S. government also charged 44 Chinese nationals with repression schemes targeting Americans online. Whatever that means, right? So they probably work for things like uh, CBC. A 61-year-old Harry Liu <laughs> Jing Wang and 59-year-old Chen Jinping were arrested earlier this morning at their respective homes in the Bronx in Manhattan. The DOG said they were charged with conspiracy to act as agents for Chinese government and with obstruction of justice facing up to 25 years in prison if convicted. I don't... I don't even know if why they're sentences. Shouldn't they just be like instantly sent out of the country? I yeah. know, why would you spend your taxpayer money on housing them for 25 years? Well, they, they, if they're convicted, so, you know, they deserve a trial and then hang them. Okay. Oh, speaking of hanging. Speaking of hanging. Here we have a, one of the, the elites we were talking about, Mr. Uh, Mr. Vaccine Maker himself 
<laughs> Bill Gates, he's not a big beer drinker. Just bought a 902 million stake in Heineken beer. Um, what, what do you think about that one, well, big guy? He, he bought 902 million stake in Dutch brewery Heineken parent company. Gates said he's not a beer uh, drinker or an ask me anything Fred on Reddit in 2018. The billionaire bought 392 million stake in one of the Mexico's largest brewers, FEMSA, in 2007. Maybe he had a heads up that you're going to have that fella who thinks he's a girl try and push the uh, the Bud Light uh, for Anheuser-Busch. What a hit that was. So they're trying to cover it up now by going back to the old Clydesdale horses, you know, the big powerful things. But people are not, they switch brands and uh, that's forever in their head. So I don't know, you're going to have to maybe relabel that beer or something. But So smart so smart business move, right? It's like either inside a trader or just really like, okay, I got to do this because, you know, Bud Light's going to lose and Heineken's going to step up. Or is there something more cynical? Uh, this, okay, one point, what could be cynical about this? Uh, he knows depression is coming. And what happens during depression? People drink, right? Like you can look at everything, like look at the 90s and Soviet, when Soviet Union fell apart, alcohol and how many alcoholics were there. It was a prevalent <laughs> entertainment source. Uh, just drink and forget about your heartaches. But also, uh, secondary thing is, uh, what if Heineken, you know, do you know the conspiracy about Heineken? If you flip the can, it uh, the E's and the Heineken here. I'll show you. <laughs> yeah, they they resemble the six 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 the 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 three sixes together. Yeah, right there. They resemble, and it's actually if you look at the star, it's like the upside down star. <laughs> now that's too far fetched. Maybe maybe not. Who knows? But you know the whole that sign of the beast thing going on with the, uh, you know, with your uh, digital IDs in form of uh, wax pass and the. Uh, uh, you know, people being chipped or uh, what's that substance they put in the vaccines? The mRNA? Yeah, but what's the other one? Uh, but what does it do? Uh, the compound that assembles itself into like microchips and stuff like this. What are the... Uh, ex, uh, ex graphite? Graphene? Graphene, yeah. Graphene derivative? Yeah, whatever. Doesn't matter. Here, Here's the... I think you're right about this. Something on about mRNA because they they've been adding mRNA to our <sighs> food, supply. food supply, and they've been doing it with animals. And you know we covered it not so long ago on a show that they also found a way to spray it on the produce, like vegetables, and and I don't know for what purpose other than something insane. Because you know, like as we covered in another shows that all those doses that they we're expecting for people to take uh, expiring and they do point where they have to actually just throw them out or donate them to a poor African country. And obviously the Africans are like, we're not that crazy. We, we already, we know that gimmick, but here there's, do you know this guy? Uh, his name is, uh, what is his name? Vigilant Fox. <laughs> no, no, no. The, um, he's a lawyer from the, hold on. I'll put, I'll, I have a video. Play this video in a second. We're eating. Is that uh, the bottom line, Tom? No, we don't. In fact, right now we've confirmed this mRNA stuff is in the food supply. Tom we runs. know that Merck has a product called Sequevity. They've been, been injecting mRNA into pigs since 2018. Uh, we know that they can actually make tr what's called transmissible mRNA. And what that means is that they can put this stuff in an animal so that it transmits to whoever is ingesting whatever it is that they're ingesting, and uh, they become vaccinated. So they could engineer this into plants, into animals, into various mm -hmm. things. And if we don't get disclosure, if we don't you know, pass some informed consent laws, what's going to happen is, is for all you guys that stood strong and said no to these mRNA vaccines, well, you're right. going to get them anyways right through your food. Tom Renz. He's an attorney. He was always about this from the beginning. Kind of scares people. And, you know, I don't know how to feel really about this because it's, they've been doing this. They did start it with the animal trials, right? 
uh, and a lot of and as as we know it, it it didn't go so well. And the thing is, if we have some data on human trials, it's an interesting fact. We can pull up data on human trials, like through disclosure, uh, through court ordered, uh, you know, actions and all that stuff. Animal trials, there's no data to be disclosed. There's no, there's no, um, uh, what's it called? There's no vehicle in place for the disclosure to be happening. What human would sign up and say, yeah, I want to be your, your human guinea pig. How much are you going to pay me? Like, what, 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 you know. Well, desperate time call for desperate measures. So some people truly believe in things like this. I don't, you know, I, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't pass by by some people. I don't know, Glenn. It's 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 a, such a tough subject. Some people would do crazy things like this. I, I like we talk about evil stuff, right? Um, as you said, it. Bill Gates not a dumb person. He knows how to invest his money, but he's evil as hell. And you know, he can actually manipulate people and. Speaking of Western democracies, like you said, just talk to average water voter. They're not that smart. <laughs> They're not that smart. So to convince them to uh, take uh, any kind of uh, chemical injected into your system, uh, even when it's experimental, and tell them it's good for you, a lot of them will, based on some kind of, um, you know, emotional attachment to an idea. Yeah, to prevent the bad cold. But here is the the conundrum. Some people, they lost family members to this so-called bad cold because it was blamed on that. So they're very sensitive. Um, you got to watch what you, you say to people because really the, their emotions, the logic goes out the window and the, the emotions trigger them right away. So they could become very uh, defensive, actually even offensive, to to let go. So... Yeah, you have to watch what you're, uh, you know, how you uh, bring it out to people. You have to know, like, gauge who you're talking to a bit first, you know. They still are brothers and sisters. So, like, I know some of those things are designed, not some, all of those things are designed to divide us. So, like, well, we can walk around and be like, oh, he's vaccinated, he's black, he's transgender. No, they're still your brothers and sisters. We, you know, you, this is the choices they've made based on whatever the assumption, the perception of the world. That's where they are in life, and we cannot turn the backs on anyone based on the choices they make. Uh, you don't have to associate with certain people. Nobody makes you to do it, but you, you still got to love them. Uh, but I think there's a war still going on on us in terms of everything. Our food supply, for example. You know, we're a carbon-based life. Where you know what that means is somewhere in the sky, if you believe in a flat Earth or round Earth, <laughs> spherical <laughs> kind of universe. The earth, the sun is the is a fire, right? Sun is a fire in the sky, technically, and um, that fire burns <laughs> in a sense, uh, like you know, all all the things that uh, we breathe is based on oxygen, and we transform that oxygen into carbon and monoxide, and then that's the food for plants. And how do the plants uh, photosynthesis happens? ultraviolet light and uh you know the carbon monoxide transfers back into the oxygen via the plants and that's how we kind of uh, flourish and that's how we stay in balance now those people now telling us that we should think and feel otherwise uh, the mayor of new york adam eric adams sorry so that food is the third biggest source of cities emissions right after buildings and transportation third right after buildings and transportation one in every five metric tons of carbon dioxide our city emits comes from food but all food is not created equal the vast majority majority of food uh, that is contributing to our emission crisis lies in meat and dairy products how did you know, you know how did i know it was coming diet is better for your physical and mental health and i am living proof of that but the reality is that thanks to this new inventory we're finding out it is better for the planet ah go ahead glenn you know 
you were talking about food before, uh, shortages. That's all engineered. We live on a planet where there's so much of everything. There's no shortage of energy. There's no shortage of food. There's no shortage of this, no shortage of that. They create it to keep the prices up so they can capitalize more. They fear us into changing according to the, the way they want us to think. The world is constantly changing. The planet is living. We're not killing it. We're a part of the whole ecosystem. That's make-believe to say that, oh, humans are ruining everything. We're doing this. We're doing... That's not true. It's not true. It has a way of writing itself, and it'll write us when we get a little bit too much. Well, isn't it... Uh, well, statistically, historically, this is the coldest the Earth has ever been, right? Or well, not ever, but uh, in the longest time. It was much warmer. It used to be called uh, global warming, but then they had to change that to climate change because global warming was disproved. Well, because it, like during dinosaur time, like it was way hotter. <laughs> I don't think there was no any ice even on a, uh, on a, on the poles. Just but in, in the 1930s in America, it was a lot warmer than it is now. Uh, many parts of uh, was that Central America, uh, Central United States, sorry. They were uh, called the Great Dust Bowl. It was like a desert. Yeah, because it was so hot and uh, dry. Uh, well, speaking of engineering, um, it actually backs your point right away. Everything's engineering. How EU halt of Ukrainian grain imports could threaten global food supplies. So here we go. We know Ukraine was one of the biggest producers of the grain and distributors in the world. So there's an article that covers that. And if you scroll down the article, and they'll tell you all those interesting, ask you all those questions, which EU countries have stopped importing the grain? Well, they start importing it for a reason. Why, Glenn? Because it's extra cheap and undermines the agrarian economy of that country, isn't it? Yeah, and not only that, the, the product is not really that good for you. It's all it's an engineered product to lower the uh, the health standards of the average person in the other countries that consume it. Yeah, it's either GMO or pesticides or both. Uh, why was the grain being shipped to those countries? What is the EU stance on its member import bans? How would the ban affect Ukrainian exports to the grain? Blah, blah, blah. And then at the end, how could that affect the global market? You know, experts say that combined impact of the bans and potential failure to agree in the extension to the deal would leave millions of tons of grain stranded inside Ukraine, potentially causing food shortages in poor countries. The reduced supply to markets could lead to a jump in prices. UN warned earlier this month that food insecurities remains an unprecedented levels. As you see right now, they're engineering the belief that the prices of food is going to go up because of something else, not because of all the money printing and the government intervention through central banks that's happened. No. Well, the, okay, let's segue right into this story. Uh, Biden efficient pollution falling during the lockdowns helped life quality um, Many people enjoyed being in environmental uh, instead of being at work. Sorry, not environmental, in environment. So, like, instead of going to the office, people went to the park and stuff. Yeah, that would explain the big rise in uh, antidepressants and uh, anti-anxiety medications and also uh, sleeping medications. And, yeah, that would, that's a, a good answer. Yeah, and people receiving extra stress by losing their jobs and losing their livelihoods, by losing their businesses and all that stuff. Yeah, that that has a really positive effect. I mean, I have a video here. We can watch maybe 10 seconds before we get sick of it. Just a second. Where we lived in the environment and we learned that we had to take care of it in order to have it for ourselves in the future. And I think about it all the time now. And I love actually going out and meeting with students who talk to me about it all the time. No matter where I go around the world, they're interested in this subject. Well, what do you think about her going around and talking to students about those kind of things? Is it more indoctrination going on? This is the... Uh this is the uh, authority on, on climate change uh, in Biden's administration. And what she does, she goes talk to the students. Yeah, make the young people worried about their future with all this false premises and, and, and false promises, too, by the way. 
That's subject. One. And it's one of the things that draws a lot of people into the Foreign Service, in fact, because they want to help our global environment. Isn't that amazing that something as simple as just going camping as a child, being a Girl Scout, a Boy Scout, or going on a trip, because you, you're you in the environment, you're looking at it, you're, you're realizing, oh, I don't want to litter there where that beautiful area of land is. It It's sort of, it's... Great point, by the way. Great point, by the way. How did it work? <laughs> yeah, do, that, I look, do I look like a climate activist now? Yeah, you do. You okay. do. Yeah, and, right. Antifa. And uh, I, how about, uh, that's like actually a good point that you covered your face. I'm making this point now. I've made a short video. You can go look at our channel. We were walking down uh, St. Catherine Street in Montreal, you know, downtown, right? Really in the core of downtown. It was just piles of masks, discarded masks everywhere. Are they good for the environment? And you read so many different articles about this now that, you know, just masks floating in the oceans and clogging up everything, the environment in itself. That's the best thing. Yeah, and by the way, like, remember how scary uh, COVID was where people just dispensed their gloves and masks and just throw them everywhere in the garbage? That was really scary. And, you know, you still see people wearing masks. Even today, with... Uh, I, I walked uh, Rambo the Rottweiler, our uh, dog here, and, and at night there's people walking and they have a mask on. So I don't know if they just committed a crime and they forgot to take it off, or I don't know what they're afraid of, but I see logic is completely out the window. They're controlled by emotions, and this is what you have to discern, not to allow yourself to be controlled. The only one who controls you is you. You control yourself. Good point. Let's just close the show with this last story. Uh, Germany wants uh, uh, Russia's nuclear industry sanctioned. Well, there's not enough sanctions <laughs> against Russia. We, we talked about it last time, right? The uh, the fact uh, that uh, actually they maybe the reason why they want to speak up about it now because they've made a political choice to close all the nuclear plants for whatever reason. And maybe it is because of the Russian sanctions or because of the uranium or whatever. I don't know. I don't know what the reasons, what the true reasons are. <laughs> but it seems to me it's engineered again, this alternative crisis. By the way, brothers and sisters, uh, the point out that the war is not what it seems. Like the pipelines that are stretching through Ukraine from Russia into Europe are still functioning. Explain that one. Glenn, how do you explain that one? Well, <laughs> that segues into the next thing. All these sanctions against Russia, and the actu these sanctions are not working because Russia is selling more oil now than they were three years ago, before the sanctions. At whatever price they want, too. Well, the OPEC Plus, so uh, they're all joining together. And they're selling the oil outside of U.S. dollars because they're selling to, let's say, India, China, and many other countries, and they're making arrangements in their own currencies to circumvent the U.S. dollar. In other words, to hand handicap the dollar. It's been a great show, Glenn. I just want to finish with this video again for the brothers and sisters to discern and don't listen to your politicians. Listen to your heart. Make your own choices. Make your own decisions based on your discernment, which you prepare for. It's not just like, oh, I just wake up in the morning. No, you wake up in the morning, you meditate, you run, you go to the gym. You would better read something. Read something. Do we get to see Canada's sweetheart again? Yes. That's how we're finishing? Exactly. Yeah, what a yeah. smile. With a smile. You sometimes hear about liberal bias in the media these days, how they're constantly letting off our government, letting our government off the hook for no good reason. Frankly, I think that's insulting. It's clear that they let us off the hook for a very good reason, because we paid them $600 million. You don't get stellar headlines like these without greasing the wheels a bit. Yes, on this note, brothers and sisters, Glenn has the last send-off message. What a beaut. That's it. What a beaut. Yeah, let's hope you vote for him again. <laughs> That's a joke. See you on the next one, brothers and sisters.